Good evening, everyone. Susan Campfield here with SueStampfield.com. Welcome to my craft room. Come on in. We're going to do some creative play tonight. Uh, how are you? I hope you're doing well in this uh, unusual summer. It's actually not too warm here in Minnesota tonight. So uh, a little sticky today. It's had some rain, but uh, hello from Australia and upstate New York, South Dakota, Colorado. Welcome, welcome. I'm here in Minnesota. So uh, come on in, hang out. We're going to just uh, relax and do a little um, crafting play tonight. So I hope you're doing well. Hey, Janine. Good evening to you too. Hey, Diane, Ohio. We got all, all the places checking in. So uh, how are you? Uh, have you had a chance to do any crafting? Um, I, I'm hoping you'll be able to help me create this card tonight. Uh, there's a couple different ways that we can go. And um, yeah, I'm hoping you guys will weigh in and uh, just write in the comments and let me know which which uh, way you think we could go with our card. Now, obviously the way that the group, the majority group is uh, vote sometimes is different than you may want. Sometimes it's different than I was planning on. And so, uh, but that's how we create great things or we create something go, mm, yeah, no, I still think it would have been better the other way. And then you can make it your own way, right? When you get home, hey, Jean, hey, Pat. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. So good to see you. Some of you might be here on my Sue Stampfield um, YouTube channel. Some of you might be over in my Sue Stampfield Facebook group. Hey, guys. Uh, or you might be on my public page, my Facebook page, Susan Campfield Independent Demonstrator. Uh, wherever you are, welcome. I'm so glad you're here hanging out with me tonight. Uh, we're going to just relax. We're going to play. Um, again, we're going to we're going to cool down with a little fall fun. So I know um, might be, be a little early for some of you, but uh, we paper crafters know that you got to start early, right? Especially with those darn Christmas cards, but we're not going to go Christmas tonight. We're going to, we're going to go fall. That's, that's, I mean, gosh, it's almost August, it's August 1st next week. Holy cow, where did the summer go? Um, so August 1st next week, and before we know it, it will be uh, September. So I love fall. It's like my favorite, favorite time of year, best weather, all the things. So I really love fall, fall cards. So we're going to do some creative play tonight. And I think I'm going to sneeze. Hold on. I'm going to grab a tissue. Oh, goodness. <laughs> maybe not. Maybe, maybe the sneeze, maybe it went away, but now, now I'm prepared. Right. So, um, yeah, this year is going fast. I hear you. I totally hear you. So we're going to do some play. I want to remind you, I always forget this, you guys, um, free project sheets. You can subscribe at SueStampfield.com. Click on subscribe. You can subscribe to my project sheet emails there. There will be one going out very soon. I know it's a little bit late, but it's coming. No worries. And it's going to be awesome. It's going to be worth it. So um, if you subscribe there, you'll get the free project sheets. There's also a section where you can subscribe to my blog and be notified when I have a blog post. And I have a blog post going up. I'm going to say, all right, I'm going to commit to this right here within 24 hours with the Crafternoon projects. I'm so close. Uh, the tutorials are written and I'm in the final um, cross-checking phase where I'm going through and checking the measurements on the physical cards and matching them up with the tutorial and reading it all through and making sure it makes sense and all of those things. And a uh, special shout out to my team members who helped me uh, help me with that proofreading and also help me make sure it makes sense. So I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Um, let me go back here. Uh, so yeah. I think we're ready to start. Let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's see. Did I miss a comment here? It's over a hundred outside. So hard to think of fall. I get it, Bella. We're going to, we're going to go to fall in our minds. Just think to like cool breezes and those gorgeous fall colors. And we'll just, we'll just go there in our brains. Right. <laughs> so, um, uh, Thinking about a visiting calling card for kids to make with a phone number, email to trade with each other. Yeah, Janine, you're a teacher, right? So you've got school starting up. Um, so that's a great idea. The, the kids can do a, a like trading cards with their information on it. Great idea. I love it. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get this party started. So um, 
let's see. You don't want to think of fall or that other season, that, that C word season. All right, I'm going to go ahead and switch the camera here. Oh, okay, the desk is messy. I'm just going to warn you flat out, desk is messy. I uh, know, super shocker, right? Okay, not at all, because that's how we roll around here. Huh. Hey, there's there's some surface showing. That's That's something, right? <laughs> all right, so we're going to do... We're going to do some dry embossing tonight. We're going to do some heat embossing tonight. We're going to do all the things. Well, not all the things, but we're doing those things for sure. So where do I want to start? I'm thinking, okay, I think we need to start by deciding on what color. Obviously, we're using the leaf ball. Oh, hang on, hang on. I have a random random die cut tree trunk here <laughs> that is joining the party, uh, which is rem actually reminding me mm. that tree trunk is from the, uh, uh, the, 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 the tree lot dies. And so um, I did want to share with you quickly. Um, so the, the craft afternoon uh, projects that you have all been waiting for so patiently um, is our fun fold card this month, which is called the uh, pop out bendy card. That's what I'm calling it. And so you slide off the belly band. This is one of the versions. And this is actually a, a newer version um, that I created for the tutorial. Um, inside, we've got the um, that cute uh, camper. The, all of these dies are from the tree lot dies. They are free with a um, $100 order right now. So it pops out like this. It stands for display. And there's a wobble. <laughs> this piece is mounted on not only a bendy, but it's on a wobble piece. You can see it there. And so that gives a little action to the card, which is always fun. So this, this dog is booking along in the trailer, although nothing's pulling the trailer, but um, the paper that I've used here, okay, hang on, I gotta find this. I just had it, oh yeah. The paper I used for this project right here, the designer series paper is from the He's the Man designer series paper. So it makes great, great masculine cards. This is actually a, the stamp set. And the dies are, are technically a Christmas set. Oh gosh, I bumped the camera. I'm so sorry, you guys. Uh, the Trees for Sale stamp set. You can see it's got the Christmas greetings in there and it's you know set up to be a tree lot, but they make great masculine cards too. And I know that my viewers have told me that is one of the cards they struggle with the most. Um, and so I did want to mention in the um, He's the Man Designer Series paper pack, there's a bunch of pre-printed die cuts. And this little van <laughs> um, actually is the perfect size to pull the little trailer um, for another card. Obviously, it doesn't work on this card, but um, just FYI on that. So the dog and the trees here are actually from the stamp set. And so this is uh, an alternate version that is on the tutorial. So the, uh, the simpler version is this one. Uh, because sometimes simple is best, right? Uh, so on this one's got some embossing with the pine uh, folder inside. And, you know, then this one, I just added in some more things. So uh, both versions are fun, right? So Joe says her desk hasn't been cleaned this year. I can so relate to that, Joe. Um, so I wanted to just uh, mention that the tree lot dies um, are part of celebration. The celebration goes July through August or while supplies last. We have already sold out of one item and that is the pool party cards and envelopes. So I just wanted to throw that out there that these products are only while supplies last and we don't know when things will run out. So just a heads up on that. So I would love you guys to weigh in one of my favorite things to do with embossing folders is to emboss on metallic uh, cardstock. It's very striking and beautiful um, on the metallics. So we're going to do that. And what I have here is these are from the brushed metallics uh, cardstock pack. You get two sheets of all of the colors here. So we have gold, we have copper and we have bronze. The bronze is this kind of light color. Now, I when I think of bronze, I think of a dark color, but I'm going off of the color description in the catalog. And I don't know, I zoomed it up here so you could see. Can you see those brush marks across? That's why it's called brushed uh, metallic cardstock. And so I would love you to vote and let me know if you think we should go gold 
or copper or bronze for our card tonight. Because our first step is we are going to um, die cut. Bev is asking, when I order this set, will I get double DSP? Bev, which set? Do you mean when you order the... Hold on a second. Hold on. Can you guys even hear me? Hold on. My microphone is across the room. <laughs> okay, if you turned your volume up, you might want to turn it down because I'm probably going to get really loud here. So sorry. My microphone was way the heck over there. Uh, let me know if you can hear me. It looks like it's plugged in. Um, hopefully that's a little better sound. Um, and then Bev, let me know uh, when you order this set, will I get double DSP? Um, I'm wondering if you are, um, oh yeah, a cat or a bird would be super cute in the camper too. Janine, I agree with you. Um, you can hear me okay? Oh, thank goodness. Um, <laughs> So Bev, let me know if you mean, will you get the designer series paper? Will you get two of each in the pack? Or do you mean the this bronze uh, metallic uh, cardstock? So let me know. All right, you can hear me better now. Okay, that's good. Thanks, Susan. Um, he's the man. I will order double DSP. So if you order he's the man, you get two sheets of the die cuts. So like you would get two of these little vans. Um, you would get you get two of all the patterns uh, and two sheets of the die cuts. Um, so if you ordered two packs, you get four of everything. I hope that answers your question. So, all right. So uh, I didn't sound distance. Oh, good. <laughs> all right. I, I did sound like I was underwater. Yeah, I was far away. Some of you might have just not had that issue on your device. Good device. All right. So I'm going to go through our, our boats here. Let's see. Uh, it's pretty, pretty widespread. Uh, I see two votes for two votes for the gold. And I see a lot of votes for copper. I'm counting. Four, five. Uh, and I'm, you probably only see the, the comments on, you know, if you're on YouTube, you only see the YouTube comments. I see the comments for both YouTube and Facebook. So uh, yeah, it looks like copper is, has eked it out here. So we're going to go with copper. Oh, there's two more votes coming in for copper. That sealed the deal. So we're going to go with copper and we're going to start by die cutting our copper. So I'm going to move all the things out of the way. And I'm bringing in, I'm dropping things. That's how we roll around here. <clears throat> I'm bringing in the die cutting machine. I'm still zoomed up, I think. Let's see. Oh, that's better. And I'm going to put in the platform number one. I'm going to be doing die cutting first. So I'm going to put in the thin die adapter number two. And then I'm going to do a number three um, plate. Now I am cutting a metallic. And so my metallic is going to, um, it might pick up any flaws in my top plate. So I want to use a top plate that is in pretty good shape. I'm going to see if I have a better one. And just because I don't want you guys to have to wait while I look through all my plates, I'm going to look at this. Oh, oh. There's nothing better, right? There's nothing better than a brand new, shiny, unused. Ooh, so nice. Um, die cutting plate. So we're just gonna go with that. Um, let's see here. I'm gonna grab some dies. We have had these dies for a while. These are called the uh, stitched rectangle dies. And I am going to grab, so these are kind of um, card based sized, I would say, and they go down accordingly. These are longer and narrower. And then this one is just kind of a standalone uh, rectangle shape. I'm going to go with this one right here. And we're going to die cut our, it was copper, right? We went with the copper. Now I've cut this a little bit bigger than we need. Um, I do, I'm pretty stingy <laughs> with my metallic cardstock because you, you know, don't get as much of that as you do some of the other ones. So um, this, this copper piece is only one and a half inches wide. And can you see how close I cut it, you guys? <laughs> like, 
not, I don't have a lot of extra room that better not shift on me. In fact, I'll probably do a little insurance with a post-it note just to make sure it doesn't move. It is actually longer than I needed. Um, this is four inches and it, it's clear to me that I could have gone down to um, three and three quarters, but whatever, whatever. So I'm just going to tack my post-it note on there just so that doesn't shift on me. And I'm going to go ahead and send this through. Let me move my um, adhesive and let's crank this through. And I apologize for that, that circle. <laughs> I use a ring light for these videos. Um, and so yeah, there's a ring, there's a ring right there in a reflective item like that. So my apologies. All right. So we have die cut our rectangle here. Let's pop that out. I'm going to be super stingy and I'm going to keep this. Um, it would make a really pretty frame. I also um, could maybe get something tiny out of here, right? <laughs> I hoard my metallic cardstock. Anyone else? Can anyone else relate to that? So yeah, I did cut it close, didn't I, Bella? Woo, good thing it didn't mess up for me. So yeah, love a new die plate, right? Ah, oh, so wonderful. So hard to do it on that first pass. Um, a lot of times when I, when I start a new plate here, I'll take my previous one and, and make that the bottom because eventually these get so scarred up, they start transferring over. Now this one did not transfer into the backside really yet. Um, it's getting close though, right? <laughs> so I'll push it a little bit farther. So now we have our, our pretty uh, die cut rectangle and we're going to emboss that. So let's grab the thing I dropped on the floor, which was the <laughs> number four plate, which is for 3D embossing folders, which is what we're going to use. I'm going to go ahead and stick this back on my uh, magnetic sheet here because I don't don't want any dies going lost. Um, and we're going to emboss. So we're going to emboss a piece of cardstock. Um, ooh, okay. I think I need to ask you another question. You know what? I have cherry cobbler here. And I'm wondering if we should use um, Cherry Cobbler or if we should use uh, Mary Merlot. So let me know in the comments if you think we should stick with Cobbler. This is the Cobbler and the Copper. Very nice combo together. Or if we should switch it up and go with Mary Merlot, which is more of a purple color. So Cherry Cobbler or Mary Merlot? Let me know in the comments your preference. Is this Mary Merlot? I might have grabbed Ruth Razzleberry. Hold on, hold the phone. Let me make sure I got the right cardstock. Oh, that was the wrong color. My bad, sorry. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> hmm. Let's try grabbing the right color, Susan. I'm sorry. This is Mary Merlot. That was Rich Raspberry, which is much more purple. Um, so copper is very nice on either of these colors. So let me know if you want to go with the Cherry Cobbler or with the Mary Merlot. Yeah, that one was very purple, right? I grabbed the wrong color. My bad. Sorry. Didn't have uh, the best lighting up there and they're right next to each other and I grabbed the wrong one. So, and, and if you already vote for Cherry Cobbler and change your mind, you can vote and say Merlot. So let me know if you want Mary Merlot or Cherry Cobbler. <laughs> Jenny, change your mind, yeah. La, 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 la. Before, I think it was pretty obvious that that copper did not go, right? No, Mary Merlot. Oh boy, it's pretty tight. Yeah, I don't know which one either. Mm -mm -mm. It's pretty close. Oh gosh, which way should we go? Red wine, <laughs> Merlot. That's what that's what Merlot means, right? So, all right, I think we just got another. Oh, two votes. Jean, were you voting for Merlot when you said that? We had three more Merlot votes on the cobbler. It pops out. It's pretty tight, guys. All right. We're going to go. We're going to go cobbler. But you know what? I might have to make a Mary Merlot one after our video because I think it would be pretty too. So this is the leaf fall folder. And it literally is made to make it look like leaves are blowing across your card, right? So it's not solid leaves everywhere. It's got some open spaces. 
And so you want to be a little strategic. I'm going to just raise this up a skosh so you can see. And yes, skosh, I uh, used that word last time. And some of you were like, what does that mean? Skosh means a little bit here in Minnesota. I'm actually from Iowa originally, but, um, you know, I picked up the, the lingo here in Minnesota. So um, I'm going to put my cherry cobbler piece in here and we can be a little strategic on where we want it. So I'm actually lining it up with the, that line at the bottom and I'm actually going to push it all the way to the right. Okay, I got to line it back up with the line. So I need to go this way. Here we go. All right, so I'm going to have my leaves kind of blowing across this way. All right, so we're going to pop that right in. Is that the direction I want it? I think so. So I'm going to put my number four plate on top. So it's just one, the embossing folder and cardstock on number four, because this is a 3D embossing folder. And I'll tell you in a minute why I was paying special attention to where I was putting the cardstock on the folder. Part of it was um, I wanted to see where my leaves were going to end up, but it's also because of the placement for our die cut piece here. So am I zoomed out all the way? Yes, I am. Okay. So we've got our piece here. Let's see what it looks like. Let's see what it looks like. Can you take down the banner? I sure can. Thank you for reminding me. Dang. I always forget that. Okay. I appreciate you uh, reminding me of that. Thank you. All right. You say it on the West Coast too. Okay. It's not just a Minnesota thing. I don't call hearing it in Iowa much, but um, so we're going to open this up and you can see how gorgeous. I mean, it's just absolutely stunning. Hold on one second here. Bear with me. I'm going to do it in Merlot just so we can see what it looks like. Let's just see what the Merlot looks like. No worries. We are going to make the cherry cobbler. That was the vote, but let's a lot of you voted for Merlot. So let's just see what it looks like. Right. Merlot is actually very similar to cherry cobbler. It's just um, less red, a little bit more purple, but a very good fall color. All right, we'll just crank that through and see what we think. All right. So there is the Mary Merlot version and the Cherry Cobbler. Cherry Cobbler is definitely warmer, a warmer tone. And the, the Merlot is a little bit cooler tone. So, all right. So we've got that done. We're going to now emboss our uh, die cut piece we did here. I, am, um, I found that if I embossed it first and then die cut it, the die cutting kind of flattened out the embossing. So my recommendation is to actually um, die, uh, die cut it first and then emboss. So um, I know I just love this embossing folder too. I knew the second I saw it in the, cat in the mini catalog that it was coming to my house. <laughs> There was no question in my mind. So I am just kind of taking a look here to see. Got that a little higher than I want. So I'm going to bring that down a little bit. Because I lined up my piece with the side and the line, I know pretty much where I embossed. So, oh my gosh, why can I not get you straight? Come on. Does that look straight, you guys? Does it matter? It doesn't really matter, Susan. <laughs> Does it really matter? All right, let me just see, because it went wonky on me again. All right. Mm, yeah, I like that. I just, it's super bugging me that it's not straight. So bear with me while I'm a little anal here. Sorry. All right, that looks straight. I'm just going to line it up. All right. Yeah, I'm going to go with that. Bring it down just a teensy bit. 
All right, what do we think? It's going to look like that. Yeah. All right, and like that. All right, let's go ahead and boss it and see what it looks like. Clunk. All right, I'm going to move this out of our way because I think we're done with this. So these stitched rectangles are a really nice core piece to have in your collection. It's just um, a lot of really nice shapes for words and different things. But look how, I mean, it was it was dang pretty on the cardstock, right? But when you do an embossing folder on a metallic, it is just absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. So we've got this panel that we've made that can now layer over our... Um, our embossed piece. And let's see if we're still like in the cherry cobbler. Also very pretty, very, very pretty with the, um, that's with the copper. Um, this is what the bronze would look like. And actually the gold, I mean, no, I think they all look nice. So, um, so we're doing the cherry cobbler here. <gasps> I didn't even score the cardstock. What is actually happening here? All right, I'm gonna go old school and I'm just gonna grab my bone folder and fold it that way. All right, so we've got our card base, we've got our piece here. So here is my question for you all. I am wondering if we want to emboss a greeting on here or if we just want this to be our card front. So let me give me a shout out if you think we should do an embossed greeting on our card front or if we should just have our words on the inside of our card. So embossed, heat embossed with copper embossing powder or um, put the words just on the inside. Oh, you missed this one in the catalog. Yeah, it's in the mini catalog. And it is near the back. Let's take a look while you're voting. Let me know if you want a heat embossed greeting on the front or if we should just leave our stamping for the inside. Heat embossed, heat embossed, heat embossed. One vote for inside, embossed on the front. Yep, looks like we're voting for heat embossed. So um, in the mini catalog, the leaf fall is pictured on page 53. Let's go find it. Sometimes these things are really hidden. <laughs> and so the leaf fall folder is one of those. It is hidden, it's in clear, and so it is really hard to see. And it's just kind of behind some samples, uh, one of which is just tiny bit embossing. It does, it is embossed, but it's it's kind of hard to see. And here they've embossed it on vellum, uh, which is another fun technique with an embossing folder. So super easy to miss. Uh, okay, it looks like uh, heat embossing is the way we're going tonight. Oh, Susan, quit hitting the camera. <gasps> what is my trouble, you guys? Oh my goodness. So now when you mount this piece, we can actually line it up exactly where the leaves lined up with the folder. Let me see if I can show you what I mean here. I'm just going to bring it up closer. Let me know if that is blurry or if you can see that. You can see the edge of this leaf and then the leaf continues there. So I can actually line it up exactly, but you don't have to, right? Like they're not probably going to notice. So if you want to pop it over here, also looks super great, right? In fact, this almost looks like it lines up, but it's not quite there. So it's up to you. I, I'm kind of torn on whether I want the same amount of space over here as the top and bottom, or if I want to line it up exactly. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that. So we're going to do some heat embossing on the front of our card. We're also going to add some embellishments because, hello, that's how I roll. Um, but we're going to do our greeting right over here. And so I have a greeting prepared. And I'm wondering if I want to do a different one. So do we want on the front of, I think on the front of our card, are you guys okay with doing for you? 
or would you rather we do thinking of you? Um, we're using the Soft Seedling stamp sets, the greetings from Matt. And just as a reminder, we did in the last video, we did this card with the same folder. Um, I've got the card upside down, oops, <laughs> with the Soft Seedling stamp set in Cherry Cobbler. And this one, we used the bronze color, the lighter metallic behind. Um, and we, uh, I think on the one we did on the video, we did a little leaf in the corner. And then I did another one uh, for my in-laws. Uh, I used silver foil behind that. And this is in soft sea foam with the eucalyptus embossing folder. This is the one I did after the video because the one we made in the video I actually gave them on Sunday <laughs> for their anniversary party. Um, this one I used the um, seasonal sequins. There's some sequins in there that are kind of white, but they're sort of holograms. So they have a little bit of a greenish hue with the, uh, in them. So. I was stalling there and give you guys time to vote. So it depends what message is going inside. Mm. Well, I think uh, that is a good point, but for either for you or thinking of you, I think could go for just about anything, right? So one, two, three, four, five. We've got five for four use and one, two, three, for thinking of use. Okay, the four use have it by one vote. Woo, that was a close one. All right, so we have uh, an embossing kit that is in the mini catalog. Some of you may already have these tools. Um, some of them have been out previously in different formats, but then they went away. Um, the embossing kit, it's right here. Let me grab it. Let me grab it to show it to you. So this is the embossing kit. I'm going to zoom out. So it comes with a little embossing tray to sprinkle your excess powder in. It comes with a brush where you can brush off the excess powder. It comes with an embossing buddy, which we'll talk about in just a moment. And it comes with these super cool tweezers. Oh my gosh, you guys, these are amazing. Um, these are not like the tweezers that you use to pluck your eyebrows. <laughs> They're a little bit different than that. Um, but this um, this handle, oh, you just got your embossing kit today, Kay? Ooh, fun, fun, fun. Um, so this is textured. It is metal. And it's, um, I don't know, it's got some texture sprayed on there. So it's a little bit grippy. And it, this is a locking tweezer. So you squeeze it to open. And then, ow, it's really strong. <laughs> and then it holds onto your paper while you um, heat emboss it. So very, very cool. Um, it also is useful for a lot of other things. But today we're using it for its intended pur purpose, which is to um, hold on to our cardstock. So I got stuff in my little tray. Let me just take my brush and just clean that out. All right. So many years ago, we did have a set of three trays. There was one that was huge mongus and then a medium and then the small. This is actually the size, the only size I ever used. And I did hang on to mine, but I, um, I really wanted, uh, I needed a new one because I lost my cap long ago. So you can use this to get your excess powder back into your container. All right. So we're going to grab our embossing buddy. This is just um, some powder in here that is going to remove any, um, if I touched, when I touched this cardstock, I probably got some oils from my hand on it. And the, um, the powder is going to be attracted to that. And I don't want it to, I don't want to emboss a fingerprint <laughs> on my card, right? I want to just emboss my greetings. So I'm going to zoom up here. I'm going to slide this up a bit. And then we're going to grab our Versamark ink pad. That's a clear ink pad, clear watermark pad. And then we're going to stamp our for you in here. And I'm just going to kind of center it right over here. So I'm stamping it in this clear powder. I hope I got my um, embossing buddy up that high. I wasn't really paying as much attention as I should have been probably. All right. So you can barely see that, um, but it is on there. And then we're going to grab our embossing powders. So this is a three pack. You get gold, silver, and copper in the one package. This is in the main catalog. It's on page 128. It's in a section called the wow factor <laughs> because dry embossing and heat embossing, they bring the wow to your cards for sure. 
So I'm opening up my copper powder. You can see it's very coppery in there. We're just picking the powder that best matches the paper. If we had used the gold, we would use the gold powder. If we'd used the bronze, we probably also would have used the gold powder because that goes pretty well with the gold. So I've got that for you. Um, I've got, let me see if we can zoom up here. So the powder is stuck to the for you. I don't actually see any little um, flecks that are sticking anywhere else. So I must have done an okay job with my embossing buddy and that removed um, anything that that might want to stick to. I can take my cap off here and get my powder back into the container here out of my tray. And that's where that brush comes in handy. Um, and this is brand new, so it is pretty staticky in here. I probably wouldn't be a bad idea to run a dryer sheet through this just to um, make it less staticky. All right, so I've got my powder has been, for the most part, back in the container. I'm gonna put my cap back on here. And let's get this heated before the ink dries and it just flakes off, right? Am I making any of you worried because I haven't started heating it yet? So I'm going to grab my, um, my heat tool right here. And this is how I'm going to... Whoa! <laughs> well, that was nearly a disaster. All right. Let's grab the tool, Susan, to hang on to this so that we don't blow our, car our cardstock across the paper. That's what it's for. Let me know when you see it start to change colors, okay? Oh, I'm seeing it start to go. So you just want to melt it until it is shiny. And boy, the boy do those hang on really well. Oh my goodness. I was not going to let go until I squeezed. All right. So we've got our for you on our card. Now we can attach our um, embossed piece here and we can put it right onto our card base. Um, let's go ahead and just stick that on. So I'm going to grab my seal. Uh, because I heat embossed it and I didn't warm my heat gun up before I went, you can see that my, my paper did warp a little bit. So because of that, I'm actually going to run my seal all the way around the perimeter. I've actually been doing this more and more. I used to just do like a half inch of adhesive in each corner and a piece in the middle. But more and more, I like I like to just pretty much go the whole interior. So uh, uh, the whole perimeter maybe that's the word i want perimeter yeah sure let's go with perimeter so no stamped up does not sell the tweezers alone at this time right now they're only available in the kit and that kit is in the mini so uh we don't know at this point if that will carry over i certainly hope that it will but don't know yet so oh so pretty you guys and now we're going to add this piece and we're going to go ahead and pop this piece up. This is what we want to be our, our focal point, our main focus. Now you would not have to pop this up with dimensionals. It's, it's, it's pretty, <laughs> it's pretty stunning. Um, you don't have to, if you don't want to, if you prefer to have things as flat as possible for mailing, um, you could skip this step. I, I'm a big dimensional fan. So I'm going to go ahead and pop that up and I'm peeling this off. This is the, the slowest part about the card is peeling off all of <laughs> peeling off all the backings, right? All right. So we're going to pop this on. And again, I could line it up to exactly match the pattern. And my OCD heart just made, that makes it happy. So we're going to go ahead and do that. <laughs> Again, you absolutely would not have to do that. Let me just find the sweet spot. There it is right there, I think. But it has to be straight or that's going to drive me crazy. So if I'd gotten it crooked, I wouldn't be able to do that. But we're going to just put that on right there. So my pattern is lining up now with um, the one below. And then we're going to add a little embellishment on here. Um, so I have, um, oh goodness, I don't know what happened there. Hold on, hold the phone. Okay, that's what I thought. All right, 
hopefully you can still see me here. So I have the brushed metallic adhesive dots and I'm going to add the copper ones to our project because that's, that's what we chose was copper. So I'm actually going to put three of them in a row right over here. I'm going to put a, a large one in the center and a small one above and a small one below. You absolutely could do um, the opposite where you put two large and one small. Um, when you start running out, if you don't, if you're making a lot of these cards, I did a similar card to this for a swap. I actually did not do the heat embossed greeting though. And I do like that. So good choice guys. So there we have our card. And then we're just going to quickly do a little stamping on the inside. And that, do you see what I mean about how striking doing embossing on metallics is? It's just, it's a total wow. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to grab my paper trimmer and we're just going to cut a panel to put on the inside of our card. So I'm cutting my very vanilla here at four inches by five and a quarter. And I can run through the sizes for this card. I don't, I don't remember if I them all they're pretty pretty standard but it's always good to reiterate those sizes right all right so i've got our inside piece here let's go back to our stamp set i'd like a little bit of leaf action on the inside to kind of uh, match what's going on on the outside you certainly could dry emboss some on the inside you could just catch a corner um, or something just to have a little bit of that on the inside. I'm going to do a little stamping instead. So I'm just putting this cool, I love this leaf. It is just the coolest stamp ever. I'm going to grab my cherry cobbler and we're just going to stamp this in the corner. All right. So just got a little leaf coming in there on the side and then um, I think I'll go ahead and put thinking of you on the inside. Uh, sometimes I leave the inside blank because I don't know what event I'm going to need the card for and so I, um, I leave it blank. Now with these uh, cursive words, um, sometimes I have trouble getting them straight on the block because I'm I get, I get confused by the cursive. So I'm laying it on my little grid paper here. And so that the bottom of the letters are kind of lined up with that line. And then I can take my block and just press down. Um, and then I know it's straight-ish. <laughs> and I can put my thing. So it, it's an optical illusion to me. It doesn't look straight on the block, but it is actually straight. So um, with those cursive ones, use your grid paper. Um, this is sold right in the catalog. It comes in a little um, a little pack. We also have the, the full sheets. Um, I like this small size. It's made for the Stamparatus, but I, I use it for everything. <laughs> because it does really, it really can make a difference uh, mounting your block straight and all the things. Yeah, these distinctive stamps are really cool. Um, Denise uh, is reminding me that these are a, what they call distinctive. And what that means is they've textured the rubber so that it picks up more ink in some places than others. That's like, this isn't bad stamping. <laughs> It could have been, but it's not. Um, it's actually how the stamp is made so that you get those built-in lights and darks like a real a real leaf would be, right? So we're going to go ahead and pop our inside piece in here. Oh my gosh, I'm zoomed way the heck up. <gasps> there we go. There we go. And there we have the inside of our card. So that's that version. This was the one we made in the last video. And then of course this one with this, the soft seedling stamp set and a different embossing folder. So 
Thank you so much for joining me. I, there was one other card I could show you with that. So um, in the um, Crafternoon event, uh, which that tutorial bundle is just about to come out, we this is one of the cards that will be in the tutorial. This is with the Perched in a Tree stamp set. These are the same card stocks that we played with tonight, the metallic uh, brush, brush to metallic card stocks. So we've got the bronze, the gold, and the copper all on one card. So that's another thought you could do a you know a panel of each color with the leaves embossed um you know on a more neutral color and that would be really cool too so this is crumb cake and you can see these panels here i use that same embossing folder and then of course this is our bendy that pops out it wobbles because it's on a wobble and then i've got the embossed pieces here so um so stay tuned. The blog post is going to be going up, I'm going to say within 24 hours um, <laughs> with that bundle. So thanks so much for your patience uh, waiting for that. I'm going to flip the camera so I can say goodbye. There we are. <laughs> thanks so much for hanging out with me tonight. Thanks for your input on the card we made. I think we did a great job. Um, I'm just going to finish up that Merlot one and post it over in the Sue Stampfield Facebook group. So um, if you are over there, if you're not yet, anyone is welcome to join. Um, just go to Facebook, search for Sue Stampfield Facebook group and uh, send in a request and I'll pop you in the group. So thanks so much, everyone. Take care. Have a great evening. and We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.